was escorting my wife in, and I turn around to walk back to my car. This guy just comes up to me, and he's on my chest, and I'm asking him, please get out of my way, and he's on my chest. And when I pick up my hands, and I didn't push him, I just went like this to him, so he could back away from me. The cop came over to me and threatened to arrest me. And I'm trying to take the car seat out of the car, put it in the front seat so I can put the baby in, and he's telling me, move your car, move your car. And he sees I'm doing this, and he's telling me, move your car or I'm going to arrest you. Move your car or I'm going to arrest you. It's not, he's not neutral. Regardless of his feelings about the issue, whether he's pro-choice or anti-choice, I don't care, but he has to be objective and he has to treat people equally. And my concern is the patients, and they're not treated with respect by the officer. And that's all, that's all they need. I mean, they've made a very difficult decision to be here. It's not easy to have an abortion. This is something that's very hot right now, a hot issue abortion right now. And we stand to lose a lot if we don't get moving. And so I want, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, you know, so trying to be part of the solution, so. If y'all are tourists, I hope you take a look and talk to the women's groups in your home area, because this is here in New York City, which is supposed to be, you know, a paradigm of choice where people, you know, we're not just a Christian city, we're a city of Judaism and Islam and Buddhism and a million other things. And here, women can't make their own choices. Pro-choice and you know it, clap your hands. Keep up. If you're pro-choice and you know it, clap your hands. If you're pro-choice and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're pro-choice and you know it, clap your hands. The reason we formed is because the, the psycho Christians, when they go out and they block women's health facilities, they feel even more self-righteous when angry people confront them, but they don't deal very well with ridicule. The psycho-Christian religious rights attacks on women and queers are related. Just like sexism and racism and homophobia, they all go together. It's the same people that have all of these things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Abortion itself is a purposeful destruction of a human life in the womb. And every medical school in the United States, without exception, teaches life at conception. Is it Christian to kick someone, you know, who's walking a patient down a street? Is it Christian to make a death threat against someone, you know? Is it Christian to tell a woman a lie in order to get her scared so that she won't go and seek medical treatment? It's not me, I'm not getting the abortion, you know, so I don't want to give them my holier-than-thou attitude about, you know, how great this, this, this opportunity is, you know. It's going to be emotionally taxing if they get it. It's going to be an awful thing. It's not going to be wonderful, but they should have the right to do it if, that, if that's what's necessary. We don't encourage anybody to have an abortion. We don't, we don't say go up and have your abortion, you know, it's a good thing, it's this, it's that. It's not a good thing. It's, it's a shame that people have to resort to this type of thing. But that's the human condition. And it's legal. And it's a choice if you have to do it. And nobody has the right to interfere with your choice and your civil rights to handle your problems the way you best can handle them. If the, if the, the anti-abortionists are really all that upset about the rate of abortions in this country, then why aren't they mobilizing around birth control, birth control research, access to birth control, teenage pregnancy? Why aren't they mobilized around these things? Because obviously the abortion isn't really their issue. Their issue is really about control. The real solution is convincing people that women are not incubators and that their health care should not be based on whether or not they are pregnant, that women have a right to choose, that women are, are human beings. You know, we need to make this so-called silent majority, the unsilent majority. You know, we need to get people voicing their opinions because we are the majority in this country. And if we let this fringe group of loud, obnoxious, harassing, and frequently violent radicals, you know, have their way, we are going to regret it. <laughs>
I think it's stupid. I think it's stupid that this has to take place in front of a clinic. I, th I think it's stupid that either one of us should have to be there. But I'm going to be there to make sure that these people maintain their right to have an abortion if they want. So. It has always been around. It will always have a niche. But they'll make it a privilege, not a right, accessible only to the rich. Hey, pro-lifers need to dig themselves because life don't stop after birth. And for a child born to the unprepared, it might even just get worse. By the way, something really interesting. You asked me about my mother, and I said she would flip. I talked to her, and I said it to her, and she said, well, that's good. I said, what? She goes, you know I disagree with you, but I'm just getting too old. <laughs> she said, I'm just getting too old to disagree with you on everything and fight you on everything. I know how you are. You're just as set in your ways as I am in mine. So I hope you don't get hurt. Call me if you need anything. Talk to you later. So. Supporters of the H-bomb and firebombing clinics.